uh, hi guys, I actually have this very strong urge to talk about a uh, British car. Okay, and actually this British car that I'm trying to talk about is actually a car that I wrote before. And I actually wrote in this particular car for about, if you can count right, I wrote in this car from December 2017 up to up to June 2018 that makes it about seven months up okay so actually this car right uh, if you go to my Instagram which I will leave the link in the description later on actually this car is basically the Jaguar F-Pace okay and I did not write in the Malaysian version instead I wrote in the Singapore 25T rear wheel drive version okay first impressions of this car right you, you think that this car should be a comfortable car because as a Jaguar, right, we all know that they used to make nice cars like the those longish XJs, you know. After that, when they came to the 21st century, uh, they were owned by Ford, okay. At that time, right, I know that they were still making comfort-oriented sedans, okay. You can see that the Mondial-based X-Type, for instance, that car, right, uh, it had a very quiet V6, you know, the, the seats are fairly comfortable. I mean, the, when you come to the F-Pace generation, right, uh, to be honest, it is more of sporty handling than comfort white because from the outside, it looks like, you know, it is a comfortable, fat-looking car. And then when, when you take it on the roads, right, what you realize is that when it goes through potholes or bumps, right, you would realize that the suspension is actually very stiff for a Jaguar, okay? To be honest, it is a mixture of a firm ride and a stiff ride because basically if I call it a firm ride, I'm actually giving mercy to the car. And if I am calling it a stiff riding SUV, what happens is that people may say that I am a nitpicking person. So I did say that this car is a mixture of these two elements. I realized that the seat comfort is, I would say two things, right? If you ride this car from, let's say, if you ride this car from Johor Bahru all the way to Skudai, right? Uh, you would realize that the seats are they are supportive okay they are supportive but they are not the softest seats available so if you ride in this car for shorter journeys you know what you realize is that this car is going to give you a lot of pain in maybe I don't know maybe your shoulder blades it might uh, give you a lot of discomfort in your buttocks as well so because I mean this car right Jaguar nowadays, they only have certain things in their mind, you see. They want consumers to enjoy sporty handling and then they even invented some other technologies um, like intelligent all-wheel drive, okay? You can find this technology in pretty much many of their models. Like, Of course, you expect the F-Pace to have this functionality, I mean this, uh, this technology, but the, the one I wrote, as I told you guys, right, it is a rear-wheel drive. If you say rear wheel drive, right, being such a heavy car and only having about, what, 250 horsepower, what happened was that at one time, at one point, the owner, okay, actually decided to take it for some minor off-roading. Uh, being an overweight car, right, what happened was that the the SUV actually struggled to go through a muddy slope. So, I mean, eventually they took a highlights to go up that slope. So, what you can see is that this F-Pace, right, it has and it has a disadvantage that is also found in the BMW X6 because, I mean, both of these cars, right, if you do not equip your car with all-wheel drive, I mean, your car is not going to go places, okay? It is going to go down to nowhere. But, of course, F-Pace, you can opt for the all-wheel drive version in Malaysia at least. The noise insulation, right, that is something very tricky because Basically, we all know that for Mazda terms, right? Mazda engineers, they know that it is impossible to break off the noise entirely, okay? So what happens is that they tell consumers the presence of road noise, okay? The presence of even wind, wind noise or, um, you know, like tire noise, all these noise, right? It is the factor that brings the driver and the car closer, okay? It builds up a closer relationship between you and your car. So basically, for a Jaguar, right? I wouldn't say that it is very deafening. I am not sure if the F-Pace is as noisy as the 8th generation Accord. It doesn't feel like a luxury comfort car because, I mean, all these factors as I mentioned so far, 
spotty handling, stiff ride, sorry, stiff plus firm ride, noisy cabin. So all these three things, right, it already tells you that the F-Pace is not a car you buy if you want to have, what, maybe Lexus Comfort. Overall, interior plastics, right, sometimes I love this car, sometimes I hate this car because basically the interior plastics, they are, they make you ask a question like, why did I buy this car for 450000 in Malaysia at least? Because in cheaper cars nowadays, right, the X70 has pretty much a fair amount of good interior materials. Uh, for the CX-5, you also expect very good interior quality as well. But for such a popular British car, they somehow fail to give it the interior quality that it actually deserves. Even the interior space is not even excellent. Why? Because basically, when I sit in the back, right, uh, with the front seats adjusted to the, to the driver's favorite position, okay, the driver is about my height as well, 1.7 meters tall, and I realized that my leg room is only about this much, okay, and then my headroom, headroom, uh, I also get about this much or this much, something like that. And then the, the thing is that this car, right, despite being an SUV, the the entrance and exit is actually pretty difficult because the roof is actually pretty low. The doors are actually pretty short and basically my dad, when he gets into that car, right, he keeps hitting his head of performance, that 2.0 liter turbo engine. It is nearly sufficient, okay? I will not say that it is powerful enough for a continental car because basically what is luxury? Luxury is about having something that normal consumers are not able to afford, okay? But you can see that if you uh, go down to the lower car prices, right? For less than 300,000, you are able to buy an A250 or maybe a Golf GTI. Those two cars, they have a 0 to 100 time in 7 seconds. And that is the same time that the F-Pace 250 achieves. Problem here is that the F-Pace has something that is similar to a cheaper car, okay? And that is not something which is very nice. And if you talk about the interior quality, right? They actually wrap up the door panels, some part of the door panels with leather, okay? So what this means is that they are trying to trick consumers, making them to think that their cars have good interior quality. But no, I mean like, I can go and wrap my iris doors with leather as well. Who cannot do that? Now we have two things, right? Performance and interior quality, which is pretty much as normal as cars that cost around $250,000. Sorry, bring it. The speakers, right? Meridian brand, okay? They actually don't sound nicer, or should I say, they sound almost the same as uh, Safiro when it just came out in 1997. Because basically, adjusting the speakers to the maximum bass, okay? and then trying to tr trying to seek a balance between bass and treble. I don't see how nice the speakers are because if you sit in the GLC 250, which I might talk about in the next video, the Bermester speakers, right, those speakers, they are five times better than the Meridian ones. I mean, of course, you can see that other YouTubers, uh, they mentioned that the Meridian speakers are about, you know, pretty nice or what. But no, for me, it's like, it is a speaker enough for you to listen to BBC, that's all. I mean, it is not a speaker for you to listen to Hits FM, okay? Uh, I'm not paid to advertise their radio channel. Lah. The Meridian speakers, right, they are not so suitable for what, Rehab or maybe Calvin Harris? No, I mean, there are better speakers out there. In fact, okay, in fact, I find that Accord speakers are better than the ones in the F-Pace, okay? But let us think about more advantages. Lah. So when you drive on the road, right, the road presence, it is, well, I mean like everyone is going to stare at you, okay? I caught an Alfred driver staring at the F-Pace, okay? Because basically, you all know that the, the brand Jaguar, right, or even their particular car models, you do not see them in Johor Bahru every day, okay? What you see every day in Johor Bahru is probably uh, W212, or maybe a BMW F10, okay? And the moment you see a Jaguar on the road, right? I personally seen a Johor registered F-Pace before. That car is sexy as fuck. 
uh, it was grey colour and you can see that even me right, I wrote in the F-Pace so many times. When an F-Pace stops beside me right, that car just, it triggers my emotions seriously. It is amazing to look at. So people, when, when people see you getting down from a car, you know, uh, some of them, they might ask you saying that, wow, is that your friend's Jaguar or something? I mean like, the, the attention that the car is able to attract, right, it is infinite. Despite so many disadvantages, right, one thing that Jaguar excel is the design because that car is just, it is sexy because it copied some design cues from the Macan, okay? I saw a Macan today and that car actually, the side profile at least looked like the F-Pace. And why? Because the F-Pace copied the design of the Macan. For handling, right, handling is sharp enough for an SUV, but if you compare the handling to maybe an XF or an XE or, mean, or, or maybe the Jaguar XJ, right? The handling of the F-Pace is nowhere near these three saloons, okay? The, what, what you can realize is that at corners, right, that rear-wheel drive SUV tends to have body roll, okay? And body roll is not something very pleasant, uh, considering that you buy this car for, for the opportunity of sporty driving. How you should enjoy or drive the car is that you should take it at moderate speeds, you know, you should cruise along the highways with you know like you are not supposed to race this car because in my opinion right at least for the 2.0 turbo version right at least do not speed with this model because i don't think that it has all the excitement that you need and you see considering that this car shows you a bit of shaking at the speed of 165 km/h, i actually expect it to be better because uh, I personally came across some, uh, some of my friends, right? They say that the Preve does not shake at 190 km per hour, okay? 190. So, you, you can see that how come such a small little C-segment sedan is able to achieve more stability than a car that costs around $250,000.